That was cool as heck. Hi, I'm Danny Gregory. This is Draw With Me. And those were fishes, fishes, fishes. Oh, amazing. A whole veritable school with a K of fishes. You guys did an amazing job with that. Amazing. Wow. I think we should just do fishes every time. I mean, what could be better? Anyway, you if you're new to Draw With Me, those are the fishes that we drew last week which was lots of fun, interesting, and clearly inspiring. So um, today we're going to draw something else. What is that expression? It's like an old feminist thing. Um, was it Gloria Steinem, someone like that, who said, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle? That just popped into my head. Today we're going to be drawing bicycles. Don't leave. You can do it. I'll talk you through it. Yeah, and I'm even rhyming. So it's all good. It's going to be great. We're going to have really fun today. There's lots of stuff to talk about. And um, yes, turning, turning blank paper into fishes. It's a miracle. All right, cool. Well, I'm just glad to see that you're all here. Sorry, I'm just flipping through your your many uh, greetings and it's just so nice i just love that you guys all say hello to each other and chat and stuff like that that's really cool well i mean you do you've been doing it for a long time i don't know how many of these we've done or for how long we've been doing draw with me's it's been quite a while but you know i think what i like about it so much is well it's the opportunity to hang out with you but I think for all of us, it's an opportunity to say, you know what, at least once a week, we're going to do a drawing. Good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't really matter the quality. What matters is we're getting together, we're doing a drawing of something, something always kind of different. And then we're moving on. And hopefully that is the, you know, the Kickstarter to your week of drawing or your weekend of drawing. And you're just going to keep going. So... All right, cool. One thing I want, so I wanted to make a couple of announcements and then I wanted to get into it. So um, let's talk about a couple of things. Oh, yes. So first of all, I want to talk about our new workshop that's coming up. This is a workshop that people have been begging us to do for a long time. Um, we did a workshop a long time ago now with August Wren, uh, who, which is the pen name for Jennifer Orkin Lewis, incredible uh, illustrator, artist who lives in New York. And uh, we did a, a workshop with her called Gouache Portraits Workshop. But, you know, um, what's cool about Jennifer, well, one of many things is that she does a painting every day. And she does it and she shares it on Instagram. She has an incredible Instagram feed. And for the longest time recently, she, for a while, her new her theme has been flowers. She's been painting flowers. So um, that was what I went and talked to her about. And I said, you know what? Everybody loved painting with gouache. It's a really cool medium. Gouache is opaque watercolor if you've never used it. Gouache. That's how it's pronounced, not gouache. Gouache. That's no gouache. Gosh darn it, that's an amazing painting. So um, I went back to her and I said, let's do a new workshop on that. Hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be here painting flowers, which is pretty much my favorite thing to paint. Between what you see in the flower and what you can make with your imagination, it's just endless. We're gonna paint in gouache, which is one of my favorite paints. It is an opaque watercolor that I can layer dark on light, light on dark, and we can build up some really beautiful textures and color, and you'll come away with a lot. We're gonna start with some one color loose warm-ups, and then we'll move into limited color palette and then starting to mix a little bit to see how to make variation of color. Then I'm gonna go a little bit more deeply into the color wheel and we're gonna mix a whole group of greens 
We will then do a portrait of a single flower. And finally, we will take our bouquet and paint a full fledged painting with a vase. I'm very excited to make a beautiful set of paintings today. It's going to be good. Saturday, October 30th. So coming up, uh, Chris says, take this workshop. She's a great teacher and her artwork is so fun. Take this workshop. I'll say it again. Take this workshop. It's going to be really fun. We are going to do, as you saw from the little trailer, a whole bunch of different kinds of drawings, but culminating in this beautiful bouquet. So it's an opportunity to go out and buy yourself some flowers too, which is, you know, you deserve them to take this workshop too. If you've never used gouache, this is your chance to learn. If you have used gouache, but you're not quite sure what to do with it, this is your chance to learn. If you love August Wren, this is your chance to learn how she does it. If you don't know who August Wren is, this is your chance to go and look at her Instagram and then sign up for this workshop. Okay, cool. It's going to be fun. It's going to be, uh, it's beautiful. That's what I would say. It's going to be fun, but it's beautiful. Everything about it is beautiful. It looks beautiful. The, the, the workshop itself is beautiful. We filmed it in her incredible new studio that she built. It used to be an old car garage from the 19-teens. Yeah. And uh, it's, oh, it's, it was just, it's making this thing has been so much fun. It's been beautiful, gorgeous, ex excellent, fantastic, awesome. Get it? So I posted on our... Um, community page oh by the way the let me go back to that if you want to sign up for this i didn't tell you what to do look down below you'll see what to do if you look down at the stuff below this video on facebook or on youtube you'll see a, a link as to how to get to it on our website all right cool so i posted on our community page which is this kind of blog that we have on youtube um a poll because i wanted to see what it would be like to do a poll and like Look at that, like 678 people voted on what they'd like to see on Draw With Me. 35% wanted animals. Well, we did fishes, we've done uh, we've done fishes, we've done cats, we've done dogs, but there's a lot of other animals we could draw. People, we've drawn a lot of people, and we could certainly draw more of them. Things. 19%. Only 19% wanted to draw things. I think you had to choose one. You couldn't do more than one. So you had to choose things. But I'm glad that 5% of you devoted your vote to more jokes. There are going to be more jokes, whether you like it or not. Whether you voted for that or not, you're getting more. And then there were a bunch of other things that people suggested. So, so given that things kind of did the worst, it, I'm sorry, but that's what we're going to draw today is a thing. We're going to draw a thing. But it'll be fun. Uh, and the thing is a bicycle, as I mentioned. So, so here's what I want you to do to start. I want you to get your sketchbook. I'm using this bamboo sketchbook from Hanula. And it has a pencil on it, so I'm going to use a pencil to draw on it. And uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's a nice paper, though. Oof. It is nice, but it's definitely, it's not, it's not ink paper, I would say. It's pencil paper. And, uh, you know, I got, I got lots of pencils here. These are my trusty Windsor Newton pencils. Some of them are getting uh, quite short, like this one. Getting quite short. True blue. Short. I have to ask them for some new ones. In fact, maybe I'll use this one. No. What is a good color, color pencil color? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Don't start yet. If you started, pencils down. Don't start yet. I think I'll use this green. What I want you to do is, without looking at a bicycle or a photo of a bicycle or somebody else's drawing of a bicycle, I want you to draw a bicycle. In fact, don't even look at my bicycle while you're doing it. I'm going to draw a bicycle. I haven't looked at one in a while. So I'm going to try and remember what it looks like, and I want you to try and do it. Then we'll do one from a picture, okay? But I want to start... By just drawing a bicycle, it's it's hard to remember what a bicycle looks like. So you're allowed to screw it up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just see if you can remember what are the bits. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start. I'm going to start with. I 
I know that it has at least one wheel, possibly two. The question is, where does the second one go? So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this the back wheel. And uh, the back wheel meaning that it's the part that has the chain. And has that uh, cog wheel. goes into it. And then it has the pedal. Okay, so far so good. And then this part is, you know, sometimes it might have like the thing that comes down with gears and stuff like that, but my bicycle is a is a fixie. You know, no fixed gear. Okay, so now what do we do? What else? What how do we what's the what's the what is this hap what happens here? Okay, so um yeah, is it like that? I think it's like that. No. Is it like that? No. Hmm. Well, I know that there's the bar that goes across. I'll try I'll just draw the bits that I remember. And then I think there's the, this pit. And then there's that bit. Yeah, I think that's it. And then there's this bit. Okay, so there's the bar that comes down to where the thing is. And then there's the bar that you sit across. And then saddle there and then there's this front thing and there's the second wheel right and then that thing goes in there and then there's the handlebars that are sort of like that and then this bit is like you know that's where you, like you have a lamp or something like that on it there I think I got it pretty much right It's funny because I, I have drawn a number of bicycles. Maybe you've never drawn one before. Oh, and spokes. But I'm not going to get into spokes. But I am going to put in, I am going to put in a, what are those things called? Like a, a it's not a, it's a, is it a, a, like a mud guard or a, uh, I'm going to give my bike actually a little bit of a, you know, it's like a carrying rack. Yeah, now I'm getting more confident with this thing. Um, yeah, I'm not going to put spokes because I just, I feel like that just, like, it's not necessary. I don't like the look of it, necessarily, because you just end up getting really finicky with how. And also, the thing about bicycle spokes is you sort of think that they radiate out. Like I'll draw a few, just to suggest it. You think that they radiate like that, but they don't. They kind of crisscross, right? Doesn't that look more correct? They crisscross each other. So, so I'm just going to draw a few. How do they crisscross like that? They go at different angles. They're not, it's not, they, I, get, I guess it's like the tension is being pulled in different directions. <laughs> How are you doing? You getting there? Are you freaking out? All right, the bell, it's true. Ooh, and I also want to put those like cool, oh, and brakes. Put some brakes in, hand brakes. And the bell like goes right there, sort of. Well, actually, I bet you, no, this is this is not where the light goes. Does the light go on the bike body, or does it go on the handlebar thing? Hard to say. Fender, right. Thank you, JJ. That's the, called the fender. And then the cool ones have this sort of thing that sticks out the back for some reason. I guess that's so it doesn't spray mud onto your, onto your clothes. Oh, and I forgot the other pedal. Joey has made a bike for someone with very interesting anatomy. <laughs> mm. Yes. Helen, by the way, welcome back. Helen Helen has been part of the Sketchable School community for hundreds of years, and we haven't heard from her in a while. And uh, I'm so glad that you're back, and um, I hope that you're doing well. So that's nice. All right. So yes, all right. That is good. Okay, feeling, I'm feeling it. Guess what? I have a bike somewhere around here. Um, do I have a bike? Yes. Oh, there it is. There's a bike. I put 
put it on top. All right, so I'm not too far off. Okay, let's have a look. Let's let's compare it bit by bit. Uh, let me move this down. Let's move this up. Here we go. Let's move the light down here. Okay. So what can we what can we determine? So and this is like a very classic bike, right? It does have the gears, which I didn't put in on purpose. <gasps> oh, I didn't remember that this kind of rack needs a thing there, right? Yep, definitely. And oh, and oh, my wheel is hardly attached to my bike. It's got to have uh, this thing that, that connects to the that bit. Otherwise, the wheel would have just like bang, fallen off the back. And this thing doesn't really go forward. It goes straight. So we're going to draw this again because this is a bit of a disaster. But it's also interesting to see that, like, this bar goes up, kind of. The whole thing is sort of more. And where I drew these kind of things coming together, there's actually a bit of a distance. And, uh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot my brakes. Yikes. No brakes. No brakes. Cool. All right. Oh, I didn't put my rear fender. It should come all the way back down there. Okay, so let's do it for real now. Let's do it for reals. Let's draw it again. But this time, let's actually be looking. You know, I bet you it helps. I bet you it helps. Okay, so by the way, this drawing... Um, I'm sorry, this... This bike that I put here, I've also put on our community page. So if you go to the most recent post... You'll see it there. So if I like turn it off and turn and move and moving it around, it's annoying to you. You can download this actual image of a bicycle, and I hope that you're grateful to me because I could have. There's a couple of other things I was considering. Like, what about this, dude? Yeah, sorry, it's a bit out of control. Let me turn this off. But yeah, I mean, this is one of the things that's challenging about a bicycle is like wow what if it was at this crazy angle you know that would be a nightmare but that is often how it is in real life they're not always flat to the to the wall like that or they could be like this oh that is the one that we're using that's our that's our original that's our og one but it could also be is this it sorry i'm just looking at my resources here Yes, this is kind of a similar bike, but again, it's at that angle. It's sort of nightmarish. Let me see if I can make it smaller. Sorry, it doesn't seem to be able to make it small right now. But um, yeah, so here we go. Sorry about this. Technical weirdness. So yeah, so at an angle... But we'll talk about how you do that, because it's not impossible to do, to draw at an angle like this. You just have to look. You know, but stuff gets stacked up, problematic. But we're not going to worry about that, okay? I'm sorry I brought it up. I shouldn't have brought it up at all. We're just going to be, we're just doing the classic, the classic profile. All right, shall we begin? Seems like a good idea. Okay, so one thing you can get really nutty about is are your wheels just take your time draw a circle it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be perfectly round it's roundish round adjacent as they say do they say that they will they will all right but it is important to find i think the center because the that hub is where a lot of stuff is going to come out of so i am going to add gears to this just because I want to draw what I'm seeing. But I want to look at a lot of things as I'm doing this. So, for instance, one thing is, where does this come down in terms of the hub? There's the hub, and this bit is like midway. So I want to make sure that that's what I'm doing, too. Yeah, it's about midway. So this distance to here to here is about the same as this is. What about, what about did I make the center point? Yeah, I made it pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. So... That is, you know, and you can get into more detail on that thing if you want to. But I'm drawing with this fat pencil. I need to sharpen it, actually. So, um, okay. 
So now this thing, which I'd totally forgotten about before, right? Didn't I forget about it? No, I kind of ha I had it there. This is the, is it the, what is the name? I don't know the name for these things. I'm sure it has a name. The big, the hub, the big, whatever, the big, the big gear thing. That's there. And it has, I'm not going to get too much into those things, but it does, it definitely has like some stuff in there. And, um, all right, but this is important. So this part of the bike, this is the base of this line that's coming up here. Let's zoom down here a bit. This is, and this, this is actually, it's important that this is vertical. Because this the whole weight of your, your body is all pushing down onto this point. So this is a pretty important structural point for the bike, right? And then... There's this line that goes back, this bar that goes back to the hub. That's important. And then there's this somewhat fine, uh, thinner piece that goes there. It doesn't have to be too thick. That goes there and that connects that part. That's important. And... Yeah, then there's the, so the saddle is up here. I think that's, that's looking pretty good. Is it? I mean, the saddle should probably be higher. But who am I kidding? So, all right. And then there's this. This bit, that mud guard or whatever you call it, and then there's um, this rack that swings back here like this, and then it comes down and it connects with this bar. So now it's all making sense, because a lot of times when you draw a bicycle, you're like, I know I kind of know that there are these pieces, but but when you start to examine the structure of it, you go, okay, it makes sense that it's that way. Like it's I understand what what the engineering of it was, and then this bar. Okay, I don't know how long this is. So I'm just going to indicate it loosely, um, and then there's this bar, which is big and heavy. And here's another thing I want to think about: where is this other wheel going to go? This other wheel has um, a relationship from, from let's have a look, from this hub to this hub. How far is that distance? Well, these wheels are circles, but they're also, in a way, squares in the sense, they're squares in the sense that the, the height and the width is the same. So we can say to ourselves, this bike is, basically, it's at least, obviously, two wheels long, but it also, if I measure this width from hub to wheel, and then I measure it again from the back of this wheel to the front of that wheel, it's another half, okay? So that, that is an important clue. This is sort of like the um, Rosetta Stone of measurement, bicycle measurement. So th this is from here to here is the same as the distance from here to this, the front of this next, the back of this next wheel. So I just measure it. Oh, conveniently, <laughs> this paint on the end of the pe pencil is just the right length, and I go here, and so I go, okay, so this other wheel, the back of this wheel, is going to be here. That's pretty helpful information, particularly if I could draw it in a proper circle. All right, so that is roughly circular. Rough enough. Good enough for government work. And now this bar is going to is going to more or less okay let's have a look at another thing this line okay so this bar that's going to come down to the center of the hub not quite vertical but close to that's important also so i can find this center here and then i can go back and go back and that's uh, probably should be a bit more extreme angle 
But now I know where that's going to connect. And then I look at this bar and I go, you know what? It's not straight. It's actually angling up. It's angling up from that meeting point of these various things. It's meeting up there. It's connecting. And it's good. So that is that is pretty much right. So now I can look at this bar and I can say, okay, this is going right down to the center of, the sp of that big gear and it's there. So that's, those are all cr now pretty much correct. This sh probably should have angled out a bit more, but it didn't, so I'm just going to leave it. And now I can look at the handlebars and I can go, you know what? Look at these handlebars. They angle forward and then they angle back. And look at the top of the seat here. Look at the top of the seat. And now look at the top, the bottom of the handlebars, more or less. So I can say my handlebars are going to be kind of here-ish. Ish. ish is a, that's a standard of measurement that I employ quite often. Ish. So there you go. And now we've got this kind of cluster of gear cables. Now where do they go back? They go forward and then they kind of come to here. Makes sense because a lot of them are being connected or going into this tube and some of them are going down to the brakes. Right? Because we know what all those cables are. They're, they're controllers for either the gears or the brakes. So now we understand their logic. We understand where they should be. Okay, so now there is that front mudguard fender goes back to just above where the just above where the pedal is, which makes sense. If it's stuck too much down, it's possible your foot would hit them, so it stops just a bit above your foot. I mean, that's the incredible thing about the bicycle. It's a really well engineered thing that people have been working on for probably 150 years. I mean, the Wright brothers. Remember, we drew one of them a few weeks ago. The Wright brothers were bicycle um, makers back in the day, I guess before there were really big factories churning out bicycles. Individual guys were making them, like blacksmiths. So, yeah, so a lot of these engineering things, of these, these structural things, they have worked out like the perfect way of doing it over the years. All right, so now there is this one wire that connects the fender. And then there's the back brake, which sits about here. Keep noticing new things. New things that and then there's this sort of clip up here. And then this, oh, there's the wire that connects the back fender. And now let's look at the spokes. Let's, let me be delicate, but you can see that the spokes don't all necessarily, they don't go, go directly across. They seem to interweave with each other because the wheel is actually a three-dimensional object. So the spoke on this side connects across to the other side. So you do get some of that stuff going on. Again, not going to get too heavily into it because it's boring to me. But And you don't need it. You don't need it to understand this is a bicycle. And I'm afraid if I get really spoke heavy, if I become a spokesman, as it were, so that's not even a good joke. If I became too spokes heavy, it just it ends up making it look like two, slice, two pizzas or something. It's just not, I don't know. You don't really pay that much attention to spokes, even though you know they're there. But when the bike is moving, you definitely don't even see them. So, okay. Chain. I've got the chain. Connects here. And connects here. Chain wraps around. And then uh, the seat. I want to look at the seat a bit more carefully. It goes down and it kind of hooks. It has this sort of little nose down there. And I want to indicate that there's one handlebar here and there's another one in the back. So it's thinking all these things through, breaking it down step by step. And you go, you know what? I can draw this complicated thing by really looking at it and by figuring out what all the bits are. So Harriet says, sometimes I feel that drawing what you're worst at is a great exercise, as uncomfortable as it often feels. That being said, screw bicycles. No way I could draw a bicycle. Oh, Harriet. You disappoint me. 
but I bet you did roll one anyway. Okay. So Chris says, I've never noticed that about the spokes. Yeah, the spokes, the, there's a lot of like kind of tension in the spokes because basically they're, they're connecting, the, they're not just connecting the hub, they're holding it in place with these wires that are going across to each side and they're crossing each other. If you studied it carefully, this photo, can we, maybe I'll blow it up. Let's see, I can blow up this photo a bit. See? I mean, look at them how they are on the top, right? They're definitely going in all different kinds of directions. So it is interesting. It is interesting. So, yeah. All right. That was cool. Um, negative space. Arlene brings up negative space. Yeah, you could look at the negative space of the spokes. That could be an interesting way of breaking it down. If you really wanted to get into the bicycle thing um, and really break it down. Oh, so here's another thing I just noticed that I missed, which is that this rack is actually, you're actually seeing the back of it too. It's coming down there. I bet you that's true here of this bar. This bar, you probably, see, there's one on the other side of the bicycle. So it's holding it in there. And this other pedal is probably hidden back here. You can't really see it. That's why we can't see that pedal. Um, so let's look back at this. So like I drew these little teeth. Because I know that there are teeth in there, but actually, you don't see the teeth. They're all hidden behind that chain guard or whatever it's called. What else have I noticed about this? So, yes, yeah, so I got this whole thing completely screwed up. I sort of had a vague sense that it connected to the hub, but I, this, I mean, this bicycle would not fly. Or whatever it is the bicycles do. Um, what else can we see in there that's, that's instructive? I don't know, I have a bit of an, an, an advantage because I have drawn bicycles quite often before. So I sort of, and I've thought about this problem, but you may never, never have thought about it before. So, so don't feel, you know, like, oh, how come he was able to figure that out and I wasn't. Just spend some time looking at it. And you'll see all these things. Okay, so there's, there's a pretty good bicycle. Now, let's say, we, let's, let's just bring this guy back just because he was kind of threatening. So if we were going to approach this, how would we do it? Let's get a plain background here. So if we look at this, what are we seeing? We're seeing that this is an oval, and that back wheel is an oval. But again, we can do all the same things that we did before. So instead of the two wheels being equal, we can start to see relationships. So we can say, okay, so the top of that front wheel is about the same. It's, it's about connecting to the top of that luggage, of the rack at the back. And then we look at the front, the bottom of the back wheel, and we can see kind of where it's intersecting, you know, what the relationship is. So, so we can start to figure out what is the size of these two ovals, you know? So you could draw that first oval, and then you could build the whole thing step by step, build all these different pieces of the structure until you'd figured out and, but you'd also look at what is that vertical, and you could do it. And again, um, as Arlene said, you could look at this negative space here, look at the negative space there, you know, look at this negative space in here, um, you know, even this shape in here, you could do all that. So that is interesting. So, yeah, so it's possible, absolutely. To want, you know, and I think maybe what you do is you use this bicycle as your, you know, as your structural thing. So you say, okay, now I understand the stru oops, I understand the structure of this bicycle. Um, and once I understand the structure, then I understand the structure from different angles. I'm not intimidated by that, you know. So there's a lot of interesting lessons to be learned, I think, in this, which is. 
that these principles of how things are put together are really useful and important when um, when you're figuring out how to draw anything because you can do this with a building, you can do this with a car, you can do this with a cup of tea, you can do this with you know a, a sleeping cat, just breaking it down and sort of trying to figure out where are the bits. I mean, when it comes to anatomy, you know, if you can think about how the bones and muscles under, underlying a, uh, a head fit together, it'll just give you, you know, again, we don't want to necessarily do an engineering drawing, but you want to understand what you're looking at. Like, how does it actually work? It's not, um, it's not a mystery. It's just unfamiliar. So um, Phyllis says, I wouldn't attempt a bicycle normally, but this breaks it down nicely. Yeah, it does break it down nicely. Um, it's true. Breaking it down in, and understanding it that way. If you understand it that way, then you understand it from other angles. That's, that's basically what this teaches us, I think. It also teaches us, I hope, that this thing that seemed absolutely terrifying and impossible is actually kind of doable if you just stop and think about it, right? It's doable. Um, so, yeah. Oops, let me get rid of that. So, okay, so we have figured out the elements of this bicycle. We, um, and when you look at it, it's just a bunch of lines. A bicycle ultimately is lines. It doesn't really have that much volume has a little bit of dimension. You have to recognize the things that are on the back of it, away from you and close to you. But it's really kind of a flat, flattish thing. So there's that. So um, what about this? Like, what's the point of all this? Well, bicycles are really interesting when you start, when you have a real one in front of you. If you could take a bicycle, bring it into the house, or go and sit out in the garage, or sit on the street and just draw it, and look at it from different angles. Look, a thing that I've done a lot with, um, particularly when I've done um, residencies in schools, is I do an exercise where we take a bicycle and we put it on a table and then we put it upside down on the table. Upside down, saddle down, wheels up. Really unfamiliar looking thing, right? A bicycle that you already are a little bit struggling with now suddenly becomes a completely alien object. Strangely, that makes it actually kind of easier to draw because you have to not deal with your preconceptions. And what I generally do is I have kids sit in a circle all the way around the bicycle and draw it from different angles. So some kids are lucky and they get the side view kind of easier. Some kids have the headlong view where you're looking at completely, you know, the, the wheel right at you and everything stacked up. But they do an amazing job of it anyway by taking their time and slowing down really observing. It's amazing. You can easily spend an hour, a fruitful hour, drawing a bicycle from that angle. So I would recommend it. Which bling, brings me to, um, you know, every week I show an artist sketchbook, um, an artist sketchbook as a kind of a, a sketchbook tour. And today I want to talk about an artist named Talia Lempert. She's a Brooklyn artist. And she, interestingly, for more than 20, 20, 25 years, only draws and paints bicycles. It's a thing. She only draws and paints bicycles. Uh, in fact, let me show you a little film that they made for Creative Mondays, I think it was, where they just did that. Do I have that here? I think I have it somewhere. Maybe I don't have it. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll see if I can find it. In the meantime, let me show you a, a little tour of her, of her, what she does, and then I'll introduce you to her once I find where that video is. Here we go.
All right. Wait, that's not what I want to show you. Good Lord. Okay. So, um, bicyclepaintings.com. That's her website. I just kind of did a quick screen recording as I looked through all of her stuff, but she is a very interesting artist, and I would recommend go and look go and look at this um, at this website and have a look, and you'll see that there are just incredible variety in what she does. Here's a little this little film made by Creative Mondays that um, that I think is interesting here. <laughs> My name is Talia Lempert and I paint pictures of bicycles. I started painting bicycles in 1996. It started as a whim. I wasn't interested in cycling so much. I'd done it as a child, but as an adult, I never, I did it as a child for recreation. And then I never really did it as an adult, and certainly not in New York City. And then one day I was walking down the street and I saw a bicycle in front of a shop and um, it just caught my eye. And I bought it just right then without any thought. And I started riding it and it was amazing. Suddenly I was, you know, go moving through all the neighborhoods when before I was taking the subway everywhere. And it was beautiful. And the bike was beautiful. And so I painted a picture of it. And then I started meeting more people who were cycling. And I borrowed their bikes and painted them. And next thing you know, <laughs> it took over. They each become unique when they're used. And people might upgrade them, or they might get worn out, or, or whatever. But they become. Uh, they become what they are because of, of how they've been used and I love the uniqueness of each one. And then I think that they're, I mean they are, bicycles are a very positive symbol. With a bicycle you can harness your own energy and go farther and faster and it, um, they're awesome. They are awesome, and I think our paintings are too. And when you go to this website and you see the variety of ways in which she's interpreted this one subject matter, which, if you know me, <laughs> that's something that I'm, I think is just great when people take a single thing and they just explore it deeper and deeper and deeper. Some of her paintings are like they're beautiful oil paintings and textures. Sometimes they're really graphic. They're all over the place, and it's just fascinating. So, um, I hope that inspired you. Thank you. Uh, th thank you for inspiring me, Talia. So that was really cool. All right. So um, next, I want to talk about this, about the winner of our gray fish book, the, the sketchbook that we used last time, which is this tiny one here, the gray book. Why am I in this little tiny circle? I'll tell you in a second. Um, Nora wrote to us from Amherst Junction, Wisconsin. Let me show you what she wrote, because I thought it was pretty cool. She wrote, Dear Danny, reasons I would be a good fit for the Hanamula Tone Sketchbook. One, married to a fisherman since 1974. Yikes. Have seen, photographed, drawn, painted, and eaten many of the fish he has caught. Scrumptious pan-fried panfish. Yum. Three, he was out fishing while we were drawing cutthroat trout today. Three, uh, three again. Never owned a Hanamula sketchbook. Four would draw fish on every page. Five spelled Hanamula correctly, I think, four times. Thank you, etc. So, congratulations. We will be firing that out to you pretty soon. All right. Um, and then this is Hanamula Bamboo Sketchbook. Would you like it? Would you like to be a proud owner of 
a slightly used bamboo sketchbook from Hanamura with a couple of pencil uh, bicycle drawings in it? Well, if you would, let me know. Send us an email. Uh, Nora, congratulations. I'm glad that you're here. I was worried that you weren't for a second, but you are, so that's cool. So yes, write to us, info at sketchbookschool.com, and uh, we will sort of randomly pick somebody to send it to. It's not really, I mean, it's kind of random, but, you know, certainly you can help help the laws of, uh, of um, probability work in your favor by giving us a really good reason why you should have it, like Nora did. All right, well, thanks very much. Um, I hope that you will remember to sign up for the workshop, Gouache Flowers with August Wren. Um, again, you can find out information about that below. And um, yeah, here's a final couple of reminders. Thanks for drawing with me today. We'd love to see what you made. So please post it on social media or put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard and make sure to tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor and & Newton. And if you'd like some more inspiration for your creativity, here are three things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel and you'll know when I make new videos, which I do every week. Two, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. A lot of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free. And third, watch another video.